It is part two of section 6.2, orthonormal basis and orthogonal matrix. A set of vectors u1 to up is an orthonormal set if it is an orthogonal set of unit vectors. If the set is orthogonal and each vector has a length 1, then it is an orthonormal set. If W is the subspace spanned by such a set, then the set is on orthonormal basis for W because the set is automatically linearly independent. Earlier, we know that these three vectors form an orthogonal basis for R3. Uh, we'll try to find the corresponding orthonormal basis. They are already orthogonal and non-zero, so once they are normalized, then they'll be uh, orthonormal. So we'll uh, just normalize them. Okay, u1 is from v1 and divide by its length. So that is normalization. That is now here norm is square root of 6. So 1 over square root of 6. And v1 is 1 minus 2 and 1. How about u2? It comes from v2 normalized by its um, length. Okay, for V2, the length is 1 plus 4, square root of 5. So 1 over square root of 5 and V2, 0, 1, 2. And U3 from V3 divided by its norm. The norm of V3 is 25 plus 4 plus 1. So that is square root of 30. So 1 over square root of 30 and v3 minus 5 minus 2 and 1. v1, v2, v3 are non-zero and they are orthogonal. Just we normalize them so the results uh, must be orthonormal. An M by N matrix U has orthonormal columns if and only if U transpose U is identity. We can prove the theorem quite easily. For simplicity, uh, we start with uh, the case U has only three columns. Yeah, expressly U is U1, U2, U3. Then U transpose U uh, this is um, written explicitly, and now we do product u1 transpose u1, that is this one, u1 transpose u2, that is this one, and so they eventually first row, third column, that one, second row, first column, that's this one, and we can finish this uh, 30 by 3 uh, entries. So if U has orthonormal columns, then only along diagonal the value will be 1, and up diagonal entries must be 0. So we reach at that one. That means when U has only three columns, and the theorem is true, but the proof can be generalized for arbitrary number of uh, the columns. So there is no uh, limitation for the generalization. So we can conclude the theorem. U is on M by N metric with uh, orthonormal columns. Uh, then here from earlier theorem, there is if and only if U 
transpose u is identity. Okay. Now, if we choose x and y from Rn, then ux norm is the same as norm of x. The length is preserved. And ux dot ui is same as x dot y. That product is preserved. And ux dot ui equals zero if and only if x dot y equals zero. So orthogonality is preserved. This theorem can be easily proved. Let's try to prove a um, couple of them. A. Now, ux, we start with ux norm squared. Then that is same as uh, ux um, transpose and ux. Now, for this one, we can write here x transpose u transpose u x. From here, we have this one, right? Now, u transpose u will be identity, so we have x transpose x. They're the same as x norm squared. So if we eliminate the power 2, then we can reach at this one. And now for part B, ux dot ui. Okay, that is the same as ux transpose ui. Now from here, like this one, we have x transpose u transpose u and y. Now this is identity, so that there is x transpose y which is same as x dot y. The similar you can prove the last one. Just try to do it yourself. The last two theorems are particularly useful when applied to square matrices. So we'll try to give uh, a name through this definition, an ortho orthogonal matrix is a square matrix U such that U transpose is U inverse. Uh, here we can write in this way, U is a square matrix and U transpose U is identity. Of course, U must be invertible. And because of this one, each column, the columns of the matrix um, are orthonormal uh, uh, columns. So they are uh, orthogonal and length is 1. So uh, here, the word orthogonal may be uh, it's confuse, confusing you, but traditionally and from earlier moment, mathematicians try to call it orthogonal, so rather than orthonormal. So we'll try to use uh, the definition orthogonal metric, but each column will be orthonormal. Okay. Okay. Here we'll uh, generate a random uh, orthogonal metric and test it. We choose n is 4 and try to get first random 4 by 4 metric and QR factorization. And because we are using U notation, we copy uh, Q to be U and print out and U transport U print out. And now randomly generate a vector and try to check its length. And now try to check length of UX. So see if length are preserved there. Here is the output. This is the randomly generated orthogonal metric and U transpose U is identity. And this is a vector randomly generated. Its norm is this quantity and UX norm is the same. So we checked that orthogonal metric preserves length and also U transpose U is identity.
Okay. Here we have two or false problems. If y is a linear combination of non-zero vectors from an orthogonal set, then the weights in the linear combination can be computed without row operations on a matrix. Is it true? Yeah, it is true. In part one of the section, we uh, considered a theorem, and uh, and that is uh, the one of the main reasons why uh, we try to get orthogonal bases. If the vectors in an orthogonal set of non-zero vectors are normalized, then some of the new vectors may not be orthogonal. Is it true? Once uh, orthogonal set of non-zero vectors are normalized, then again, the resulting set must be orthogonal. In fact, orthonormal after normalization. So uh, that part is wrong. A matrix with uh, orthonormal columns is uh, an orthogonal matrix. Uh, is it true? Is it true? It's not true. Now, why is it not true? Orthogonal matrix is requiring you know, orthonormal columns. And another one is a square metric. So if it is not a square metric, then it is not an orthogonal metric. So the given statement is wrong. If L is a line through zero and Y hat is the orthogonal projection of Y onto L, then Y hat norm gives the distance from Y to L is false, right? Here we may write in this way y call uh, projection to L and then the orthogonal component. Then uh, from here z is same as y minus y hat. So that if you measure the norm, then there will be distance. So that is false. Rather than y hat, you have to put here y minus y hat. Right? Every orthogonal set of set in Rn is linearly independent. Okay. I guess this one is also a challenging question. And is it true? It's false. The reason is orthogonal set may include zero vector even though the set has a, a zero vector is orthogonal because uh, for zero vector every other vector the dot product will be zero so that uh, orthogonal set uh, does mean that every vector in the set is non-zero so orthogonal set is simply defined so that each vector from the set, um, each different vector has uh, dot product of zero. So once it has a zero vector, then it cannot be linearly independent. So it is wrong. If the columns of an M by N metric A are orthonormal, then a linear mapping x to ax preserve length. Is it true? Yeah, it is true. It's written in this way, but that is exactly the same as that one. Along with the mathematical notation, we write in this way, but it can be explained in this way. So uh, it must be true. Okay, that's the end of the section. Thank you.